Hey, welcome back once again to Photoshop Elements TV. The only place you need to go to learn all about Photoshop Elements. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how to use the RAW editor. Now, if you don't know the difference between RAW and JPEG, or if your camera shoots it or not, consult your uh, operating or your owner's manual. But RAW images are uncompressed images. So one, you have to think about, they are a little bit larger. Sometimes, well, a little bit, sometimes three to four times the size of a JPEG image. And it captures all of the image. So what I mean by that, it doesn't compress anything as opposed to JPEG. A JPEG image is, is, is the camera's best guess at the colors you're shooting, uh, the uh, exposure you're shooting. It takes all that information, cameras are really good nowadays, and it compresses it into a JPEG image. So when you import a RAW image into your editor, you're going to get the RAW editor. We're going to go ahead and look at that now. So I'm going to click on File, and open an image. We're going to go in here, let me go back one. Oh, can't go back. Uh, let's go down here. I might be able to do it here under pictures. And just playing around a little bit this morning here. So we do have the pictures. This high point California. And these are raw images shot with a Nikon camera. That's why they say NEF. Now if I click on one of those images. And that image is good enough. We can see it's kind of overexposed in the background. But that's okay. And click on open. Once you click on open, you're going to come up with the raw image or the raw editor. And you can see at the top it was shot with a Nikon D600. Now, this is just an easy way to get your raw image and you can make some uh, changes to the image because it's capturing everything that that camera captured. So what I mean by that is you can... Uh, up here you can uh, zoom tool you can zoom in you can uh, use the hand tool and move it around uh, a white balance tool to set your white balance you can crop it straighten the image we could talk about all these later on red eye removal tool which is kind of not even really used anymore um, you can have preference dialog and um, you can rotate it forward and backwards but what we're looking at here is the right side so at the very top we have the instagram the a histogram. So the histogram shows you the exposure levels and you can see where the spikes are way over on the right so I can tell you it's way overexposed. And you can grab this and you can see there where it's overexposed. See all the lights lighting up there? All right. We can pull that back and go back to the other side trying to click off of that and this side would be the underexposed side we really don't have anything that's underexposed so that's your total histogram now if you come down through these you can see where it says uh, treatment color or we can click it and change it right to black and white so you can do that with it your profile is Adobe color you can change the profile to Adobe landscape Adobe portrait there's a couple different ones you can play with here go back to Adobe Color. Your white balance is where a raw image is really nice opposed to a JPEG image because see where it says uh, as shot but we can set this white balance to whatever we want to. So let's say it was a cloudy day you can see the colors already start popping. Shaded, fluorescent lighting, uh, daylight. So we're just going to go back to as shot. Your temperature is the color temperature, right? So we can go and pull it back. And if you watch the trees here, you'll see the trees turning more blue. You could bring them up more green. I usually set this on a landscape picture. I look at the trees and try to get them as green as possible without going too blue. When you're going too blue to the left, you're cooling the image. When you go to the yellow to the right, you're warming the image. You're, you're heating up the image, right? You're warming it. So the tint... Obviously, it's just uh, tinting the image. Again, you can look at the trees. Sometimes I use the sky. You can set that. 
Your exposure limits, if you see everything set to zeros right now, and I told you it's a little bit overexposed, so you can just pull this back a little bit here. You can see where the clouds are in the skies, but we're not going to pull it back out much, obviously. That's way too much. You can go back and find one of my uh, uh, change the sky pictures uh, or videos where I change the sky and give it a more blue sky. So we just want to just bring the tone it down a little bit from not being too overexposed. If you ever mess up with one of these, if you double click it, it goes right back to the zero setting. So if you just double click them, they go back. Set that back to one. Your contrast. And again, when you're playing with these, you're not actually saving anything. So we're not hurting the image. We're just looking at it here. That's why this raw editor is really nice to use. Highlights. We can bring the highlights up and down. You can see how we can bring the highlights all the way down and get some of them clouds back up in the sky. So maybe you want to do that, even though they look kind of white. That's all right. The shadows. You could bring pull your shadows up or make them darker. We're just going to leave that at zero. The whites. Again, if you pull the whites all the way to the left, you can see the clouds are even more uh, showing up even more at the top. You go all the way over, make it super white. Make it zero. The blacks. Blacks and shadows are very subtly different. Little uh, subtle changes with that. The clarity. We can actually clear the image up. Be careful because you can actually make the image, especially when you use clarity on people, it can make them look uh, almost like a mannequin. So, But we're going to make it pop a little bit here. We'll raise the clarity up a little bit, make those trees pop. The vibrance of the colors, right? We can make it very much more vibrant. Be careful because you're going to change the color tones. So watch your color tones. And then saturation of the colors. You can blow it out. I used to work with one guy, and he always liked to undersaturate, undersaturate by about five. It's kind of what he liked to do. So we'll see. Undersaturate by five. Once you have everything set in this editor, in the raw editor, all we have to do is click on Open Image. That's going to open us up, and now we are in the uh, wrong tool selected here. We are in the Expert Editor. So now you can just start editing your picture normally. But you see that we have a lot of those uh, preliminary things taken out of the way. Uh, we got rid of a lot of that preliminary stuff. Um, like right now, I would start working on the sky and stuff to make that a little bit more blue. But uh, again, that's another video. So that is how you would bring in a raw image from your camera. People often ask me, they say, well, why would I shoot raw as opposed to shooting JPEG? Or maybe some people, like my camera, I use a Sony uh, a6000 now and it shoots jpeg and raw together and saves both files on the camera you can do that what i often say is if you're on vacation you're shooting hundreds and hundreds of pictures i'd recommend shoot those in jpeg let the camera do its job let it compress it if it's something interesting that you want you say maybe i want to work with that certain picture later you can turn your camera over to raw and shoot it in raw so what happens if we open a JPEG. Can you open a JPEG picture in Camera Raw? Well, yeah, absolutely. So if you go to Open, go to File, Open in Camera Raw, and now we're going to go back and we're going to pull a JPEG picture I was looking at earlier here. Uh, I think under Harley. Grab one of these pictures. Nah, not that one. Here's a picture of uh, my bike, one of my bikes I had. Click on open, and you'll see, sure enough, it opens it. Now, if you look under white balance, though, remember before we had all the possible white balance settings we had, but a JPEG will only allow you to select either auto or custom. All right, it doesn't let you select all those other ones that we had in there. It will still let you make it black and white. You can still do that. You can still work with your temperature. We can cool it down a little bit, warm it up. We can work with our tint. So everything, all the other options you do have available to you. Uh, some people, I've, I've worked with some people in the past, and they really liked uh, pulling their JPEG images in and, uh, you know, still being able to adjust some of the stuff with it. So, like the highlights again, you know, so it's not so blown out in the sky. Shadows, bring those down. The whites. Yeah, we'll set that right about there. 
the blacks. Make your blacks a little bit more vibrant. The clarity, remember the clarity, right? It actually makes that picture look really good there. So we'll just run it up. Vibrance of the colors. Yeah, right about there is good. And your saturation. So again, it's very easy to do all this. Uh, it's very easy to work with also a JPEG picture. If you want to do that, uh, it's very much <clears throat> up to you. But I do have a lot of people ask me that. Can you open the JPEG up in the raw editor? Yes, you can. At that point, we click on open image. And again, now we open that image up. And you can see it's in the uh, expert editor mode. This is the raw image that we had. And now this is the JPEG image. So I hope that this helped you out a little bit and get you a little bit more comfortable with it. If you have any questions, by all means, put it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you, and I'll try to answer all of your questions. Once again, thanks for watching Photoshop Elements TV, and I hope that you come back here for more lessons and more learning on Photoshop Elements. And also, if you're not subscribed to the Photoshop Elements TV channel, please click the subscribe button, and uh, I'll bring you more later on. So until then... Keep those shutters clicking, keep your editors editing, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.